Okay, this is part three in a series on electric power system stability, and we're running an application in C Sharp to simulate the response of a generator to changes in the electric power system. And in the previous video, we developed a solution method using numerical methods to solve the response of a generator, solve for the speed and the angle and the electrical power of the machine as it responds to a disturbance. We used a fairly simplified method called the modified Euler method. And in this video, we're going to extend that to a more accurate and more popular method, which is called the Runge-Kutta uh, method. And we're going to develop a solver, uh, a method in C sharp to solve using Runge-Kutta. Now, uh, in, previous, in the previous video, we developed a very simple classical model. It's called the classical model of a generator. And it's got a mechanical power input, it's got a mechanical inertia, and it solves for the electrical power based on the angle of the voltage generated in the machine. And it uses this equation to generate the electrical power output. And in the, in the simulation, we, we modeled a three-phase fault on the terminals of the machine to see how it responds. And we applied that fault for uh, a tenth of a second and then cleared it to watch the response of the machine. And this is what we got when we um, ran that model, when we simulated this model in an industry standard power system simulator application. And we're developing something that's going to give us a very similar uh, response. And here is the, here's what we get in the C Sharp application we've developed. And this is the exact same response using the angle and the electric power of a single machine connected to an infinite bus. So in the previous videos, we talked about solving this and we don't have an exact equation for the response of the machine, either the angle or the speed or the electrical power. So we have to use these differential equations which give us a slope. And all of these numerical methods are about using slopes to get estimates of the actual equation, which we don't know. Uh, and what we do is we take the initial condition, electrical power. Using that, we solve a slope, which is basically what we get from this differential equation. Gives us a number and we get this slope and then we can go out on this uh, line, this slope, and get a new value and keep iterating to get a, a simulation of this actual response. Now the big question, is there a more accurate slope we can use than this what we developed for our initial condition, because you can see out here, it doesn't give you a very accurate value. You'd rather have something up here. So what we'd like is to have a different slope, a more accurate slope at this uh, delta t that will give us something closer to what we know the real uh, curve is. So uh, we also said that this electrical power is a function of angle. And using this equation, you can see the electrical power is a function of this angle of the machine. And the angle is a function of speed using this other differential equation. The change in angle is a function of the speed of the machine. So now you can see we've got two differential equations we need to solve simultaneously. And all of those go into solving the uh, iterative solution of the, the speed and the angle and electrical power at each point in time. So initially we use this slope, we go out to this delta t, uh, we have a new value of speed, or at least an estimated new value of speed. We plug that into this equation to get a new slope at this point for the angle. From that we can get a estimated value of angle. From that estimated value of angle we can get an electrical power estimation, plug that in and get a new slope at this, this future point using those values. So now that we've got this new slope, what we can do is we say, hey, this is a better estimate than this initial slope. So maybe what we can do is take these two and maybe take an average of those two slopes to get a much better value out here at delta t. And that's really what these numerical methods, the various numerical methods, the Eulers, the Runge-Kutta, the other numerical methods are, are different ways to come up with a better estimate using different slopes, different numbers of slopes to get a better estimate. So what we've been talking about so far is getting a slope at this delta t, this new time step. We get this new uh, estimate of slope. 
But what we can also do is we can we can get a new slope at half of that time step, delta t over two. And when we do rung a cutter or some other methods, basically we're not only getting a an estimate of slope at this delta t, but we can also get an estimate of slope at delta t over two. And now we've got, in this case, we've got three slopes. We can, we've got the slope here, we've got the slope at delta t over two and the initial slope. And we can, you know, maybe take a weighted average of those three slopes. And in fact, with the Runge Kutta, it we take four slopes. But using the same methodology, we take four slopes at either the full delta t or delta t over two and the initial point. And we take a weighted average of four slopes to get a much more accurate estimate of the uh, curve at delta t in the future. So that's what we're going to do when we write the Runge Kutta method. We're basically going to get four slopes and take the weighted average. But really, it's the same, the, the same concept as the modified Euler. We just extend it to get some more slopes. So here is the um, application we're writing. And a lot of this is very similar to the previous video where we did the modified Euler. Uh, we have, let me run this for you, and here's the application. We've got a chart, we've got two buttons. We click solve, and it basically takes our simple or classical model. We're starting at this time, t equals 0.1 applies the three-phase fault, the power goes to zero. Then you clear the fault at t equals 0.2, and you can see the electrical power oscillates as the machine recovers from that disturbance. And also the angle oscillates proportional to this electrical power. And you can see it starts out at maybe six degrees and goes up to maybe 15 degrees and oscillates back and forth. And that matches very well what we did with our industry standard power system simulator. So we know we're on the right track. So in the Runga Kutta, uh, we're going to use a lot of the code we used in the modified Euler. As you'll recall, uh, we have an event handler where we press this um, solve button and it goes through and it does, it, uh, it uh, calls two methods. One is initialize and the next one will be Runga Kutta to actually solve. So the initialize is basically the simple method here and is like we explained before, all it does is populate the uh, arrays of machine electrical power, machine angle and machine speed with the steady state values uh, that were determined from the initial load flow, it just populates these constant values up to the point where we're going to start to apply the disturbance at T1. And T1 is basically T start, where we start the disturbance, divided by T max times the number of samples. So that's how many samples we're going to go with, we're going to uh, populate in these arrays until we get to the point of the disturbance. So it's basically just initial, initializing those three machine arrays. And then what we do is we call the Runga Kutta method. And a lot of that is copied, a lot of this Runga Kutta method uh, code is copied from the modified Euler, but we're just extending to make some more iterations. Uh, now we've also, as we talked about in the previous video, we are doing some initializing of the solution uh, iteration parameters and also we're defining the machine parameters and in initial conditions. And these are basically identical to what we had in the previous video. We've got the T max, we've got the delta T, the number of samples, uh, the time that we're going to start the disturbance, apply the fault, the time we're going to stop and some other variables. And then we've got the machine parameters, initial conditions, the inertia H, the machine reactants, the initial mechanical power, the initial angle based on that initial um, uh, reactants and the initial power. And we've also got the synchronous speed, which is two times pi times 60, which is 377 for the speed in radians. And um, those are basically no, these are no change from the previous video. And then we just initialize the arrays of the machine angle and machine speed and machine power with the 4,000 or 5,000 elements, which is basically five seconds with uh, one millisecond per sample. And that gives us 5,000 samples. So we're just initializing the array. Again, no different from the previous video. Uh, we've got the exact same initializing. So now what we do is we go into the Runge Kutta method. 
And similar to the Euler method, we define some internal value, uh, variables. We set the uh, initial angle equal to the steady state angle, and we define these uh, new angle, new speed, and new power variables we're gonna use in these iterations. And then what we do is we're going to start this um, solution at the point where we left off with the initialize. Remember, we, we went to, to the 0.1 second where we're gonna start the, the initialization and we initialize the arrays up to that point. Here, we're gonna start from that point and go on to the end of the uh, five second um, simulation. So we're starting from uh, I equals T1, which is T star over T max. And we're going through and we're doing the, um, for each of the samples we're going through and we're uh, estimating values of machine power, machine angle, and machine speed. So what we're doing is we are, we are making, we're, t we're getting four slopes. In the modified Euler, we did two slopes and then we took the average of those two slopes to get a value at delta t in the future. Here we're gonna do four slopes and we're gonna take a weighted average of those four slopes to get a much better and more accurate uh, estimate of machine power, angle, and speed at delta t in the future, okay? And then when we're done, we're going to plot those and later on we'll go into our simple plot method to show how we can plot the results. So again, there's, there's basically four estimates where we will calculate the slope, go out on that slope and calculate a new value at that slope and use that to calculate a new slope. And we will make four of those estimates that are all basically look very similar, okay? And in, in some ways you can just copy the code from each estimate to use for the next estimate. Not quite, but it's fairly close. So give you an idea, they're very simple uh, concepts. So the first estimate, uh, here we're at t equals t0, the, the starting time for the disturbance, and we're calculating the uh, rate of change of angle and rate of change of speed, just like we did with the modified Eulers. And the rate of change of angle is speed previous minus the synchronous speed, and rate of change of speed is that a constant times the difference in power, okay? So we're, we're, we're getting a slope at time zero. Then we're using that slope to come up with a new angle and a new speed estimate. Now to do that, we are going to come up with an, an estimate at delta t over two. So we're coming up with basically this point here. Instead of at the full delta t, we're getting an estimate at this point. We're, we're figuring out where this dot is. And from that, we can get a slope at that uh, location. So we're gonna figure out this dot and then come up with this slope. So we've got the, the slope, we come up with the new angle at that delta t over two, and using those new values, we figure out a new power um, using that new angle value, okay? So that estimate gives us a new angle, a new speed, and a new power at that delta t over two. Now we use that and we go into the second estimate and you can see it looks almost identical. Uh, what we have now is K2D and K2W, which is again the new speed minus the synchronous speed, A times PM minus new power, which we calculated in the, in the past. And then we come up with a new angle at um, a new estimate of angle and speed at delta T over two. And we go through using those, we calculate a new power using the new angle, and basically it's identical. So now we've got those, we go into the third estimate, and that's identical to the others, except you'll notice that it is not at delta t over two, it's at delta t. So we're calculating a third estimate of slope using the latest estimates of speed and power. Third estimate of slope, and we are coming up with a new angle and new speed at delta t, not at delta t over two. Okay, so now we've got uh, newer estimates and we again go through and calculate power using that new angle. And now we are at the fourth estimate 
And we again go K4D and K4W, calculate a new slope using the new speed and the new power. And now to get the final estimate of machine angle and speed and power for this iteration, we take a weighted average of those four slopes. And that's what we're doing here. Uh, now, instead of just dividing by four, the slopes dividing by four, we are putting more emphasis on those slopes at delta t over two. So we're taking the slope at the k1d, the first estimate, two times the second estimate slope, plus two times the third estimate slope, plus the fourth estimate slope that we just calculated, and dividing by six. So you've got one plus two plus two plus two, which is six. So it's basically a weighted average of those four slopes with, with more emphasis on the second and third slopes. So once we've got that, we have a final estimate of machine angle, in this case, and machine speed at the end of delta t using a weighted average of four slopes. So it should be a much more accurate estimate of angle and speed. And then our electrical power is just the latest electrical power. So here we have for this iteration, our best estimate at delta t of machine angle and speed and our latest calculation of power. So uh, once we've got that, we basically have for this iteration, the three values and we put those into the array. Now, um, after we're done with our iteration throughout the end of the solution, we can plot it and to plot it, I'm just calling this plot it method and I'm feeding it two values. Okay, here is the plot it method and it takes an integer k and we're giving it four and a double which is the time. And this time represents the total amount of time you want it to plot from zero to, in this case we said plot the entire five seconds of the simulation. And this integer k, we gave it a four. Now the k defines which uh, values I want to plot. If I put K1, I just want to plot the machine power. If I put K2, I just want the angle. K3 is the speed, and I put K4, which means I want to plot all of them, okay? So here all I do is I say, okay, how many samples do I want to plot? And it takes the input time. In this case, the time is the full five seconds. So it'll be five over five, so it'll plot all of the samples. And here I just go through and set up the time for each sample, which is I times delta T. And here I'm just setting up the um, parameters of the chart. We talked about those before. Uh, this is an important one where I say in the chart areas, axis X, round axis values to make sure that the if you run it here, you can see that the axis values are nice and clean. They're rounded. Uh, it makes the, the graph look cleaner. So what I do is I just switch. I have a switch statement depending on the value of K. If K is 1, I chart, I plot the machine power and break. If K is 2, I chart the machine angle, convert it to degrees from radians. Chart 3, I chart the speed. And case four, I plot all of these. I've commented out the um, machine speed, but you can plot all of these. So basically, um, we can do that. And the reason is because all of these three um, arrays are available since they were defined outside of um, these methods. So we populated them and uh, they're available to plot. So that's the basics of the Runge cut. As you can see, it's very much like the modified Euler, but we're just using some more, we're developing some more uh, slopes to give us a much more accurate uh, estimate in the future. So that's the, um, the basics of doing a uh, Runge cut to numerically solve. And in a future video, we'll probably look at solving a complete uh, power system with multiple machines and combine it with a load flow to see how you would actually do this with a real uh, power system. So hope that helps. Take care and have a really good day.